time in nearly two decades, NOAA has issued a severe solar storm watch due to intense activity on the sun. It's sending large amounts of plasma and magnetic waves towards Earth. KTV's Tom Vakar has been looking into impact of this storm and joins us live from Oakland Chabot Space and Science Center. Tom, Fridays are telescope nights at Chabot. So how's it looking out there now? This is, a, if you've never been to the Chabot Space and Science Center, you got to come. It's just a wonderful thing. Uh, and here on every Friday night and every Saturday night from 7 to 10.30, they have public viewing night. You can come up here and you can look through the telescopes and you'll see a lot of things and very possibly, just very possibly, some of the lucky folks who come up this Friday and Saturday may well see an aurora borealis, which is pretty uh, significant, and that's because on Saturday, the geomagnetic storm level will be severe. That is just one notch below the highest level of extreme. Solar storms are increasingly important, as this and next year will be the peak activity of the 11-year solar cycle. Now, right now, this active sunspot is so big, you can see it using your solar eclipse glasses. We shot this on a sun-protected camera. At 124,000 miles long, this is one of the biggest sunspots ever seen. Hazards to Earthlings can come when the highly charged solar energy shock waves hit Earth's electrically charged layer. They can take out satellites, uh, they can disrupt communications, and in extreme events can even uh, disrupt power grids on Earth's surface. Way back in 1989, there was a major power outage uh, that affected the Northeast, and that was due to the effect of a solar storm. For many people, the Wi-Fi that they use in their homes, again, dependent on satellites. Even migratory birds and bees that rely on the Earth's magnetic fields to navigate can be affected. The current solar wave intensity is rising and will be at its peak on Saturday. What might happen to grids, satellites, and other technologies is unclear. These events are sufficiently rare that they have not we haven't had the chance to test a lot of our infrastructure against this kind of activity. It's also possible that the Aurora Borealis, the northern lights, could extend as far south as the LA Basin. In the time that I've lived here, which is almost 20 years, this is the best kind of prognosis I've ever seen for being able to see something. If it does appear, the best viewing times would be from 10 p.m. Friday night until 2 a.m. Saturday. From this light pollution map, you'll see the best viewing places are very dark, such as the Delta, West Marin, north of Santa Rosa, or the Central Valley, east of San Jose. Unless Mother Nature puts on a really big show, most likely you will see it in the lower northern sky, a pinkish sky, looking like it's coming from the ground. And so, 7.30 to 10.30 night, Chabot Space and Science Center, or as I say, find yourself a really dark spot somewhere remote, and if there is an aurora, uh, you'll be able to actually see it, and we're hoping that that will happen. There's no guarantee because a lot of science has to happen before that does. Uh, very common up north, but not so common down here. Tom Baker, KTVU, Fox 2 News. Well, Tom, these earthlings don't get off until uh, midnight tonight, <laughs> so it'll be our best bet. We're hoping for clear skies that we can see some of those northern lights. Tom Baker, thank you. Very good.